back to the culture call on Praise 93.3 with L. Spencer Smith. Our desire is to reach and empower the community by discussing a cross section of relevant topics from various perspectives that are essential to its growth and interpersonal connections. Be sure to save our call in number 205 752 4800. Be sure to install the free Praise 93.3 app so you can send L. Spencer Smith a message or topic idea. Search for WTSK in your app store. This is the world great morning, great morning, great morning, precious people. You know what time it is. This is your guy, your boy. That's right. Bishop L. Smith Smith right here on the Culture Call, the number one talk show. I am grateful for you. This is definitely the place where Tuscaloosa meets the world. And of course, for the next two hours, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., we're going to be talking a little bit, like we say, about everything from society to sports, education to economics, to from religion to relationships. And as always, it is our desire to create a safe space, a safe space to have empowering, provocative, and yes, yes, sometimes controversial conversations, because guess what? You can't get around that in this world. But guess what? You can call in and or chat it up on us on our app. Yeah. We're going to tell you a little bit more about our app in just a moment. Yeah. As we learn together right here, right here on the culture call. So great to have you. Listen, it's time for my shout outs. Number one, shout out number one. Welcome to all of you. This is your first time listening to the CC family. Welcome to our house, the culture call. Absolutely. Absolutely. Whether you are at work and your cubicle, whether you're riding through our city or whether you're on vacation, we are so glad and grateful of that you have been, have decided to take a listen. Yeah, take a listen. I'm telling you, we have a time here on the culture call. We cut up all the time. And we always give you something provocative and something to think about, you know, over the next two hours. So welcome, no matter what you're doing, welcome if you are listening for the first time. Shout out number two, number two, to all of my faithful, committed, consistent listeners from the Culture Call. Listen, I am grateful for you. You indeed make us the number one talk show. We are grateful for you. I'm telling you, we would not be here. You've been hanging out with us for over a year, pushing us and encouraging us, giving me hugs, giving me dap. Yeah, pointing the finger, say, man, you something else. Hey, I take it all. I take it all and it makes me better. But thank you to all of our faithful listeners to the Culture Call. It just gets better from here. And then shout out number three, finally, to the inimitable, anointed man, as we say in the Pentecostal church, man of God, <laughs> Brother Jay, that's right, who keeps us moving and keeps us inspired from 5 a.m. all the way up to 10 a.m., passing me this hot revival baton, thankful for his coaching, his mentorship, his leadership. Man, ain't nobody like Brother Jay. Y'all need to get down with that. You know what I'm talking about. Absolutely. And so we are grateful, definitely, definitely for him. Speak long life for him. And you heard him tell y'all, treat me good today, right? <laughs> so listen, let's, pay, let's, put, let's do what Brother Jay said. Take good care of me. <laughs> Absolutely. Listen, if you don't already have the app, do me a favor. Open up your phone or your smart device. Go to the app store and tap, uh, type in Praise 93.3. Praise 93.3. Yeah. And there you will find our free 99 app. Listen, it does not cost a thing. You need to make sure that you have that app to not only hear the culture call, but yeah, to hear all of the amazing programming here on Praise 93.3 and 790 WTSK. You need to have that app in your arsenal. Absolutely. And so, hey, do me that favor. Go ahead and download that. So no matter where you are, Dallas, Texas, Phoenix, Arizona, Jackson, Mississippi, or definitely, definitely right here in the city of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, the beautiful city of Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, uh, Montgomery, Mobile, Huntsville, Bology, Gordo, Reform, Aliceville, Utah, doesn't matter where you are. You can hear us all over the world. So I need you to go ahead and do that for me. Absolutely. Also, do me a favor, be consistent and let me in on your business. That's right. It ain't, it ain't just your business. It's my business. Go ahead and, and send me your public service announcements and events to culturecall.praise at gmail.com. That's culturecall.com 
dot praise at gmail dot com and give me an opportunity to let everyone know, Lottie, Dottie, and everybody know what's happening in your church, your organization, your sorority, your fraternity, whether you're an artist getting ready to have a concert or a preacher, a pastor getting ready to run a revival. We want to put some faces in the place so that you will know that what you are doing in our community really, really matters. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. You know why? Because we do it better when we do it together. And as always, as always, here is the golden number, 205-752-4800. If you feel like talking to me, and I know most of my listeners, they have to listen, can't talk because y'all at work. I get it. You sneak and listen. and It's okay. But I appreciate those of you who even are sitting at home. I get it. Shell those peas. And if you need to call me, call me, 205-752-4800. That's right, 4800. That's what I need you to do. Call into the show. Listen, please, please, ma'am, please, sir, please, bro, please, sis, follow me on social media. I am on Facebook, The Culture Call. It, we made it really easy. Once you type that in, you find me. Press the like button. That's right. Go ahead and do that now. Press the like button, and uh, you will know uh, what's going on on our social media page. Absolutely. The Culture Call, all of our points, all of our shows, uh, when we can, when we remember to post them, <laughs> right? I need you to go ahead and follow me on social media. Big things are getting ready to drop, and you, it's going to be announced on social media, so I need you to follow me there. Right. Also, if you have missed any previous shows, if you have missed any previous shows, I need you to what? Follow me on Apple podcast. That's right. Just type in culture call. Then you're going to see my face. Leave out the the. No, you won't find me. Just culture call. You're going to see my face and you can listen to all of our archived shows uh, that we have listed there. I'm telling you, we talk about some stuff, 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 stuff. We've got some amazing things planned uh, for the month to come. And I'm telling you, you need to hold on to your seat, hold on to your hat, <laughs> get your plural pearls so you can clutch them because we've got a whole lot of things we want to inform you about and talk about. You know, we are in a political season. We are moving toward election, but that's not the only thing that's happening in the world. Yeah, there's so much going on and you don't need to be late last and or lost. Why? Because you just don't know what's going on. Listen, I'm doing the reading. I'm looking at the Twitter feeds. I'm looking at Facebook. I'm looking at all this stuff, reading the books for you, just in case if you cannot. I'm going to bring that information to you because guess what? That's what my calling is. That's what I do. That's what I do. So do me a favor. Go ahead. Sit back and relax. Grab you some coffee. Whether it's Maxwell House or Starbucks, doesn't matter to me. Maybe you're not a coffee drinker. Well, maybe you like your tea. Yeah, you might like your tea. Get you some herbal tea. Chamomile. If you're trying to calm down and green tea, if you're trying to get a little caffeine kick to push you all to all uh, give you a little energy to push you toward lunch. Right. Maybe you're not a coffee or a tea drinker. Guess what? I need you to get some spring water or some alkaline water. Essentia is my favorite. That's right. Go ahead and get you some water. Get hydrated. Get down to those cells. Wake them up. Shake them up and tell them, let's get into the culture. How about that? Absolutely. Listen, 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 listen. I'm telling you that there, again, is so much going on in the world. It's so, you know, news is 24 hours a day. And I always like to start off with some kind of news to bring us up to the place, into the space to where uh, we are not missing anything or we're trying not to cause you to miss anything. Um, but there's so much going on, so much transition we're entering into, you know, closely, swiftly uh, into the month of September, the ninth month. That means we're about 90, maybe 90 days away from the election, 90 something days. Uh, and that's very important for you to know. First thing I want you to know is go and check your voter registration uh, uh, information. Please do that. What's happening is, you know, I, I, I hate to say that because I don't want to sound biased, I have to go down straight down the middle, but there is a campaign uh, literally out to harvest your information, but never register you to vote, especially if you are a new voter. Right. A lot of, of states, southern states in particular, uh, purged their voting roster after the 2020 election, uh, citing 
uh, uh, voter fraud and election integrity and all that kind of stuff. That's just a bunch of fluff. It wasn't that at all. You lost. You didn't want to admit it. But nonetheless, here we are, right? And so we need you. I need you to desperately not wait until October and November where, you know, it takes so many, it takes so much time to change things. Go ahead and look at it now, right? You can go to uh, vote.org, go vote. Uh, you can do all those things. Uh, 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 what is that? Uh, G-O, uh, get out the vote. Yeah, GOTV.org. You can go there and find your voter registration information. You can go down to the, uh, the clerk's office. Make sure that you are registered to vote. Your voice is so important. I'm not telling you who to vote for. I'm just telling you to make sure that you can, right? <laughs> right? Make sure that you can vote, right? I don't trust provisional uh, ballots. Don't trust those. No, 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 no. They will be the last to be counted if they are counted at all. Go ahead. Listen, you heard it here first. You hear it and you'll hear it continuously. Go ahead and check out your voter information because that's going to be the key this year to making sure that you have uh, the right and the access to your vote, right? Also, with that, make sure that you are clear on where to vote because uh, throughout the year, voter places or vote, uh, polling stations uh, um, switch, right? They, they You think it's one place, but it's another place because they moved it. You know, all of these things can happen. They do happen. Listen, and we're not going to say that there is anything uh, nefarious that's going on, that people are doing wicked and underhanded things. It is our responsibility, mine and yours, to make sure that we are properly registered, right? Uh, maybe about three times a year, I like to check my registration, my voter registration, where I'm voting, what all the districts and all that. I like to do that just to make sure that they didn't get, you know, some epiphany or some a quote unquote anointing to drop me off the road, right? As if I've not voted. No, I voted in every election. So you got to do your due diligence, ma'am, sir. Please go out and make sure that you check your voter registration and that all is uh, in place. All is copacetic. All is right where it needs to be so that when you get time, when, when it's time for you, us to go on election day, there, uh, there are no snafus. There's no problem. You got all of your information right there. That's the first thing that I really, really want to tell you, right? Here is the second thing, and we're going to talk a little bit about this today, is to understand uh, that each candidate, each campaign has a particular agenda. Now, now I, I want to talk a little bit about that, just a little bit about that today, about the agenda. I want to talk about a Project 2025 uh, on the Republican side. Um, and and I also want to talk about the pending uh, Harris uh, Waltz uh, agenda that they're not going to roll out until next week because that is the DNC uh, convention in Chicago, right? And so a lot of their policies we kind of already know by their the rhetoric and all the things that they're saying on the stump as they campaign uh, around the country. We can hear that. Uh, but but in a for on a more formal way, uh, the Harris Waltz campaign is going to be rolling out in a more uh, substantive literary um, uh, device so that you can have it in hand. Right. Um, what is important to us is that, you know, I was, I was speaking to one of my mentees, one of my son's amazing son in Atlanta. Uh, and I began to share with him that what is important to me, you know, is not Democrat and Republican. That, that, that what, what I look at as an individual, uh, and this is just me, you may be partisan. Uh, my, my lot in life, my position in life does not give me the, uh, give me the, the ability, uh, or the imprisonment, if I can put it like that, to be partisan, right? What my responsibility is, is beyond, because we started talking about the economy, right? And I, I posted a chart. And we always go back and forth because he trends more conservative in terms of his leanings. And I'm a, I'm a little bit more liberal, right? Um, I, th I like to think that we are both right down the middle, right? Because that's what, you know, we sharpen each other. But, you know, at what administration had, you know, a recession, had difficult um, uh, economic times and... And what 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 administration had a better time in terms of turning the economy around? 
And I posted that on social media, Culture Call. And, of course, he responded. <laughs> and I was tickled. I get it. I understand. And I, he was like, no, no, here's the deal. Uh, I'm not talking about a particular person. I'm talking about a particular individual. We can go back from Reagan, uh, Bush, Clinton, Obama, Trump, uh, and now currently Biden. And, of course, uh, the Democrats are the ones that the economy actually does better. If you're if you're middle class, low class, the average American, and of course, if you are a Republican, they trend to move uh, what, with what uh, Ronald Reagan did in the 80s, which is trickle down theory, which is that you give tax cuts to the richest and the business owners. Now, I want to say the richest, the business owners and the CEOs, and they'll trickle it down by creating jobs. Well, that is yet as an economic principle uh, to to happen. Right. On the Republican administrations. Right. But the reality is this. I told him I don't have that benefit of doing that because I serve and I pastor everyday people who go to work, who want to make a living for their family, who want to be able to pay their bills, who are looking, who are going through the grocery store. And whether it is uh, Piggly Wiggly or Publix, they're having to make decisions, uh, bread and butter decisions. Uh, for their family. So I'm not looking just at the economy because the economy can be doing great. But if social programming and, and, and you're not caring about humanity, um, that's an issue for me. So I got to look at the human, uh, uh, the, the administration or the people who we elect, who is going to take better care of the human family, at least who is going to try, right? Because we know in a democracy, it's not just what you want that comes to pass. It's a compromise. That's what that's what true politics are, right? And now we've got one side that's trying to take out compromise. It's got to be what they want it to be. They don't know how to sit at the table. They vote in line with it, whether it is going to harm and or hurt their constituencies are not, right? Um, and then you have another side who is speaking to the empowerment or to the rediscovery of the middle, the lower class, taking care of the poor, the homeless, the indigent, those who are struggling, right? Because I believe that if we have the uh, the richest economy in the world, uh, that if we can pay for war, we can also pay for food, right? There's only one side uh, that's voting against uh, children having free lunch and free breakfast if they can't afford to purchase it. There's only one side uh, in the country, whether it's on the federal or the state uh, level, that's enforcing that. And there's another side that says, hey, the children ought to be able to eat. They cannot study and they cannot learn if they have stomachs that are grumbling, right? And we need to call a thing a thing, right? But regardless of your politics, you know, we need to understand that there is, again, a difference between pro-birth and pro-life. That one party is pro-birth and one party is pro-life, right? And so that's a, that's a difference. you got to understand that. And so, you know... I fall on the side and when I look at the scripture, when I look at the Bible as a particular level of context of how we ought to be as humans, culture call, culture call, it, the difference is clear. The difference is clear. I do not believe, and I don't know if you do, but hey, this is me. I don't believe that if a woman is being abused and experiencing domestic violence and or a man for that instance, of that he has to stay in that marriage by law, by it's documented. That, 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 you know, they want you to stay there for the children. I don't believe that, that women who cannot have babies uh, ought to be treated and castigated as something that is less than human. I just, I have to look at what, what each party is doing to make sure that everyone at least has a fair and equitable place. And as a black man, as a black and brown man, I don't have the luxury simply to look at my bank account when you are looking at other things in terms of diversity, equity, and inclusion. When you're looking at critical race theory and you're throwing it out when you're trying to change the history of my reality here in this country, when you're trying to paint my enslaver as a hero and you're, and you're whitewashing or no washing, actually, you're erasing the fact that for 400 years that we have suffered and struggled in this country Right. There is no way that I can align, you know, myself from a human context, even if I wasn't a believer, even if I wasn't a man of faith, even if I wasn't a Christian, there is no possible way. Right. 
There is no possible way that you can see that, that you're going to put into law that children uh, who are 10, 11, 12, who have been raped, uh, are mandated to have that baby. That's not your prerogative. If that child chooses that, if that child's family chooses that, or along with their doctor, and if they invite their priest or their pastor into that conversation, that is fine. But the federal government should not be making those kinds of conclusions, period, right? And so we have to look at what the agendas are, right? I know that you are religious and that you are conservative, and I know all that, but wait a minute, hold on. At some given point, what is most important is not the economy, right? What is most important is the people because the people, uh, uh, the, the, the health care is about people. The economy, it's about people, right? <laughs> right? That they're still practicing a level of chattel slavery because they look at humans, they look at workers as, 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 as slaves, as camels, as beasts of burden. You don't have that. No, no, you cannot. You can't. Let me say this again. You can and not. One more, one more time. You can't look at that and say, oh, that makes sense to me. That makes sense. You can't just give the police carte blanche quali- qualified immunity over everything, especially when they are human. Talk to me. Right. When they are human and they do wicked things, I don't care if they have a badge or not that we try and attempt to add some moralistic value to those kinds of people. And no, every every person should look uh, on their own and make sure uh, that, that, you know, these people, if they mess up, that they kill somebody, if they harass somebody, if they harangue and they, you know, they do things and, uh, 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 you know, place and set people up to be convicted and they don't uh, operate with honest hands, how can you protect and serve? And those people should be like regular people. When you abandoning the, the 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 pledge to your badge, no, they should be prosecuted just like everybody else. See, and so you have to you have to make sure um, that 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 that's what's going on. You got to make sure and align yourself with that. Now, here's the deal: I've heard it from so many people that it doesn't matter if y'all vote in the South, in Alabama, in Mississippi, uh, in in Louisiana. It doesn't matter if y'all vote because they're gonna always go red. Well, the re- the issue is is not that. That's not the issue. The issue is that we've conceded that people have no character. We've conceded that people have no integrity, right? We've conceded to allow people to overdose on Fox News and full newspapers of spreading a particular ideological agenda. We've allowed that to happen. And so we stay home, right? But when you understand the demographics of each of the southern states and the population of, of blacks, that if we would vote, the southern states are not red, they're purple, they are purple. Georgia proves this. Georgia proved that in the last election, right? You got the Democratic president, uh, a candidate for president won, and they have two Democratic senators. Absolutely. Let alone the Congress people, right? And, and so what we have done is that we have seeded because we live in the South that this is how it's always going to be, that this is going to be the land of Dixie, and that is not true. When you stay home and do not exercise your voice and your vote, that's the result. That is the result. Red is the result. Their brand of conservatism is the result. Their particular ideology is the result, right? And you cannot complain and or criticize where you have not participated. This is why, Culture Call, I am stressing today. Almost almost on a soapbox preaching, if you will, right? I just haven't taken a text. I am really encouraging you and admonishing you. I beseech you, therefore, brethren and sisterin, <laughs> to make sure you make your voices heard, right? This is why uh, uh, Georgia and, and all the southern states are, are dealing with voter suppression, right? This is why, because they're seeing the trend. You remember I told you all that this is the not just the time, the signs of the times, but the time of signs. They're seeing it. They're seeing what happens when minorities, black and brown people, go and exercise their vote. 
And then when you add that to uh, the majority population that that believes in full humanity, the full context of humanity, then conservatism cannot win. And when I say conservatism, when you do your studies sociologically, conserving what? The greatest insult to black and brown people and minorities should be make America great again. And I'm not talking about the people. I'm just talking about the concept of ideology that you would say that to people. Because America has not always proven itself to be great just because we've got a a few advances and, you know, many advances. And we're not definitely not taking down that. The current context and the fueling is if they had a chance, they would not allow us to. That is the issue, right? Then you've got this governor, a black guy, Mark Robinson from North Carolina, that's talking about that he wished that we could go back to the time. Watch this, y'all. Culture call. Watch this. He wishes that we could go back to the time when women could not vote. Now, let me tell you how stupid that is. Because, I listen, I could use and flourish and use uh, my ex- lexicon, but stupid and dumb, that, that seems like the best words ap- apart from using profanity. Right? <laughs> right? The, the, when, when women couldn't vote, you as a black man couldn't vote either. Women got their suffrage rights way before black people did. <laughs> so what are you talking about? Because if you go back to the time when women couldn't vote, sir, you wouldn't be running for the governor of North Carolina. Have you bumped your head? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And so, you, you you know, but he's been indoctrinated and inculcated with this kind of conservative ideology that makes you... Uh, that that measures you by your level of color blindness. I'm like, dude, what do you see when you look in the mirror? What what? Why do you think that we could go back there if we go back to that time? If we make America great and go back to that time, sir, you would be lynched. Talking about in North Carolina, absolutely, are killed in some other form and fashion for running for governor. You would not have even been able to get your name on the ballot. But, sir, comma, you are a useful idiot because because you're spouting what they, that, that system, that infrastructure, uh, that, that system proposes. They will support you. They will put money in there as long as you get there and they can control you with their ideology. And so even now, North Carolina is, 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 is shaking up because, you know, the people who believe in the full humanity of folks are waking up. And that's that red state that used to be blue when I was growing up, but it's red, it's red now, right? Couple of, a couple of transitions and the blue turned red, but at best it's purples, purple if we would wake up. If my people would wake up and go and find out really what's on the ballot and do what Zora Neale Hurston says. She says, all of my skin folk are not my kinfolk. That just because they are black and brown and the various hues in between does not mean that they have the best interest. I sat there and looked at the news over the weekend and looked at this black man obfuscate and confuse and support radical policies that, sir, <laughs> that, sir, the only reason why you are there is not because of your intelligence, because you're lying. You're not there because of your agency, because you're lying. You are just, uh, refuting exactly the history. You are supporting a system that's going to hurt more people, right? And so our mentality culture call should not simply be to vote, but vote for the pe- for the person who's going to be the best for all of the people. I don't want uh, people who are conservative and even people who think I shouldn't be where I am today to die. No, you have the right to exist as individuals, as a person, whether we agree or not. Only one side does not agree that people have a full right to be people. When you would call immigrants animals, when you would do that, when you would separate parents from children, and I do not like Republican or Democrats uh, of, of views on immigration because we never get down to the root cause. We never talk about why. We just see people. And the only reason why is because one side thinks that when you let uh, people in, immigrants in, that they vote for one side. 
And so you're going to call them ego, you, uh, uh, illegal uh, coyotes. Uh, you're going to call them animals that they should be. No, absolutely not. Absolutely. All of us, regardless, have a right to exist. What you do with that existence is what matters. And we need to begin as a black and brown people to really understand what it means to exercise our vote and what is the agenda of both sides. We're going to talk a little bit about that today on the Culture Call right here with your boy, L. Spencer Smith. Praise 93.3790 WTSK. Keep it right here. There's much more to come. This is the world we are back right here on the Culture Call with yours truly, L. Spencer Smith. Praise 93.3 FM and 790 WTSK. And y'all got to excuse me. <laughs> y'all got to excuse me. I kind of get, I kind of get riled up every now and then, right? <laughs> right? And so I, I, I'm telling you, I'm serious. That, that what we need to be paying attention to, Culture Call, in this time, is who is going to promote a better human, who, uh, a human country, <laughs> a better humanity for us all. And, uh, and, and not to get caught up because as black folks, we don't have the uh, opportunity, neither the leisure, uh, to get caught up in these ideological fights, right? Our, our fight has been that since we have been in this country. Right. That I keep telling you that we are the conscience. We can ill afford to forget. Right. We can ill afford to forget the the history and the progress and the suppression and the current context, because it's not it's not it's no longer the parents of of the 40s, the 50s and the 60s who are in charge now. It's their grandchildren (laughs) that's still perpetuating some of those things. Right. And and again, again, I always have to put the caveat. I'm not talking about in terms of people, because there are some there are some great white folks and there are some horrible black people. I wish I had a ham and organ because that's a word right there. There are some great black. There's some great white folks and there are some horrible black people. So I'm not talking about color. Definitely not. I would rather hang out with Tim Walls than I would Byron Donald. You, you feel what I'm saying? That, I mean, so it, it, it's, it is what is within. The, the, the exterior is what, uh, is, is what we get caught up with, right? And, and we, miss, we miss wholeheartedly the opportunity uh, to, to reevaluate, or better yet, evaluate really what is on the line. Because we don't know agendas. We know sound bites and twisted things. You know, I'm looking at it even right now. The news media is siding on one side. It is paining them tremendously to report on the, the, the snaffles, the terrible interviews, the, the, the age that they did so with Biden. You don't hear that anymore. I, and I told you that. I told you that. That this was media driven. They don't want to talk. They had stuff since the summer, but never leaked it. But it wasn't like that when Hillary Clinton was running for president. They released John Podesta's emails as a way to help, you know, the GOP Republican and Trump side. Now everybody's talking about discretion. Now we're talking about professionalism. Nobody cared about that. See, I, I, I don't need you to get caught up with with the with the, you know, with all of the stuff that's going on and missing the true intention, right? That there are rich, ultra rich CEOs that run these news companies. And news is not news like it used to be with Walter Cronkite, Tom Brokaw, you know, right? They are not, the, this ain't that anymore. Where we were made to sit down and, with our grandparents, our parents, and, and look at, um, you know, look at all of the things that was going on in the news. We had to sit there. <laughs> we had to sit there with with no relief. We had to watch the news, and the news was, uh, was utterly boring, right? Oh no, they made the news exciting now. They 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 you know they're mad now because one was you know one side won't uh, do interviews, and the other side they shouldn't do interviews because when they do, you're sitting there like, what in the world are you talking about? Because the media wants to control the narrative. 
I know I'm a part of that media, but I, you know, hey, I'm not on national media. They get paid millions of dollars. You don't hear me. They get paid millions of dollars to obfuscate. They get, they, they get paid millions of dollars to confuse people and to report only one side of the information. So while you're sitting there, I'm talking about from MSNBC all the way up to Fox News. When you sitting there and then they made these outlier uh, decisions, you know, uh, 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 when there was a, a bill, the Fairness Act, that they took it down where you had to tell the truth. Now you don't have to. And that was repealed by who? By Republican side. Because they want the right to not to cover up. Too many Southern people were finding out. Too many people in rural areas were finding out the truth. So let's turn this over. Let's stop this so we can create radio stations and TVs and TV television networks that will lie to people. They want you to get all. They want you and I to be, you know, uh, their lap dogs of their for their ideology. And this is why I tell people all the time, even when it comes to church, even when it comes uh, to to uh, theology, even when it comes to seminary. First of all, I believe every preacher should be educated. You shouldn't just be called. You should be educated. Educated. What do you mean? I mean, you could be called to be a doctor, but you're not going you're not going to operate on nobody until you've been educated. You can be called to be a lawyer. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be. Yeah, you could do all of that. But guess what? You won't get there if you're not educated. A preacher is the only thing that is so divine that you don't have any kind of education, any kind of workshop, any t- kind of, you know, class to do it. You just go in unction and you do what your forefathers did. And, 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 or you just in trying to interpret a sacred text with, from the limitation of your human knowledge. And I get it that the Holy Spirit helps us. I understand that. But you got to put a little something in. Right. It it will cause you to remember what you have learned. If you've not learned anything, then when you get in the pulpit, you just as an empty cart, as someone that's on the street, that's trying to get you to pay for something, but have no wares, have have no product in uh, at at their stand. So, yeah, you're not going to charge me for lemonade and ain't no lemonade on the on the on the stand. Right. So. So, yeah. But you're seeing it. You're seeing it even now, Coach Call, that there is a move to dumb down humanity. Dumb down humanity. The first thing, again, you notice I'm saying size, right? The first thing that one side said they're going to do in their first 100 days if they win is dismantle the Department of Education. Number one, do you know how, how, how many, I mean, millions, billions of dollars will be lost if you shut down the Department of Education, if you if, just think about that, if you think about and, all, and see, you got to ask yourself, where is that money going to go? Where is the money? Let's say you accomplish shutting down the Department of Education. Where is the money that you were spending going to go? Right. But you already proven it. You're you going to give it tax cuts because you prefer to, to, to not have the rich folk pay anything. Because in your mind. You think that the bridge folk are the ones that's creating everything, and they're not. They could have inherited things. They could be rich idiots. Yes, that part. Culture call, we got to do better. We got to pay attention, right? So uh, our schools, what? The state's going to handle schools and all that stuff right now. They're not going to have the subsidies in, in rural areas that they might need because the federal go- government has taken away the Department of Education. Ain't but one side. Ain't but one side said they're going to do that, right? Ain't but one side that wants our grandparents to pay more and, and you who are listening to me to pay more for your medication. That ain't but one side. One side that wants that, <laughs> right? Right? But yesterday it was revealed, or actually this morning it was revealed, that the, that, that the current administration, President Biden, uh, negotiated with the drug companies to lower the top, the top 10 most expensive drugs. And all of them had to deal with high, uh, diabetes, um, uh, heart conditions, uh, cancers, all of those things. Only one side. What's the problem? We don't know the agenda. You're voting. You can't just vote off of emotion. You feel me? You can't just vote because I like this person. You see? 
that's what that's what that's what you you have to do. And and I, I, I want you to understand that when we get to that place, when we get to that place to where uh where we just let them run roughshod and implement, it is going to affect our community. Remember, I told you that we don't have a community if we don't have control over our economy, over our education, and over our environment. Economy, right? They'll decimate our economy, such as it is, right? And, and you know, folks are like, well, that's not going to happen. They know, what, what, what do you mean that's not, what? <laughs> When you're dealing with people who have no integrity, there is a difference between you having a, a particular ideology, but you're having integrity, right? Having character, at least at least doing what you believe is right and what is fair to all humanity, even if you trend on one side. And there's a difference where you will cavort with other countries to win, that you will upstage the entire government. And have a coup, stage a coup, an unsuccessful one, but you've been cooing all the way since that failed up until the present moment. Because you believe that only your perspective and your point should exist. See, if we don't understand that, we are going to be uh, uh, messed up. We are going to be messed up, wholly messed up. <laughs> I mean, entirely, <laughs> entirely messed up. My goodness. And so uh, you, you, you have to start thinking what is on the agenda, right? That I told you before, they're trying to ban contraceptives. But what happens when you're a new couple and you're not, and you're not ready to you have a child yet? Why is that any of the government's business, by the way? Yeah. Why is that? Why, why is that the government's business of what a husband and wife do and prevent, you know, do to prevent pregnancy. Why is that? Why are they doing that? What, what, for what? Uh, you, you see what I'm saying? We want more people. Well, cause so they can have more babies because the Bible say, the Bible say, you, the, okay, but the Bible, the, the, <laughs> you are not the enforcer of the text. If that person does not have Holy Spirit in them, who's going to lead, guide, instruct, right? Rebuke and reprove. Uh, how are you, what? Are you serious? Your candidate had, you know, cheated on his wife, committed adultery on his wife who was pregnant with a porn star and then tried to hush it up. How do you get moralistic now? How does that work? You see, but that's what's coming down the pipeline. That is cut. That is what is cutting down the pipeline. That the proposal on the table, culture call, right now, as reported, Right is that that you and I middle class will have a four thousand dollar tax increase while the the ultra rich and the one percent gets a tax decrease. You see what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, you know, again, uh, it, 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 I, I I have to come this direction because if we do not, if we do not. Then we're going to listen. We're, we're we're going to be again trying to figure out how in the world did we get here? That is not listen. That is not uh, uh, how how we want to live as humans. And only one agenda, you know. Again, it's not perfect. There's some there's thing I don't agree with the current administration's. Uh, situation, how they are responding with with regards to Israel and Gaza. I don't agree with that. There needs to be an immediate ceasefire. I believe that because children now are being killed. Right? Uh, but I also don't believe that you should blame one side because Israel does have a own, their own leader. And until Israel, you know, and and and, and Palestine, they've got to begin to learn how, how to do, how to live close to each other. Right? They're like next door neighbors. But one side, again, a ultra-right conservative side, feels like Palestine should not have the right to exist. Wait a minute. I thought that was Israel's testimony, that Israel has a right to exist from its establishment in the 1940s. I thought that was there. So now how do you become the bully and don't want somebody else to exist? You see? 
This is what I'm saying, culture call. We've got to be a, pay attention, not just to the rhetoric, not just to the rhetoric, not just to the side we like. And they know that if they throw God, listen, no president, none, no president, Obama, Bush, Clinton, Trump, indeed, Biden, Harris, whoever the next person it will be, uh, are not messiahs. They are not God. Right? We keep reading the theological text, not even living in the culture, in the society to understand. See, those people didn't have a right to vote. They weren't living in a democracy. Right? So they had to rely on God, watch this, and lineage to select leaders. It was, they were despots in the scripture. Absolutely. Old and new. You can pick one. Right? That, that, you know, uh, that, that God says to them, to the children of Israel, you don't want a king. That's not what y'all want. Y'all don't want to, they kept saying, we want a king like everybody else. We want to be, we want to put somebody in charge. He said, okay. All right. And he gave, he, he anointed Saul with a flask. He anointed David with a horn. That's two different. That's a Bible study. I'm not going to go that way. Right. That was two different ways that that happened. That he anointed Saul with something that was man-made, a flask. But he anointed David with that which was uh, made from a sacrifice, a horn. Thus, David is the man after his own heart. But even David had some issues. So you're not going to find a perfect issue, but neither a perfect person to be president. And you're not going to find that person in the text. Yeah, uh, do you hear me? <laughs> you're not going to find that individual in the biblical text that was not even written about this world. This world was not even established at that time. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, come on. That America is not the modern day Israel. And some people really believe that. Right. And so when you talk about anti-Semitic, those people who fu really function in that space believe that uh, Israel doesn't have a right to exist. Why? Because they believe Christians have taken their place, has replaced them. Replacement theory. Right? That's the, that's the bottom line. It is bad, poor exegesis. That is poor, right? And so we, we base everything to think that God favors America more than anybody. No, there is an American system that keeps things in play. And then there is also a fueling of how we align religion and all those other things to make you believe that God has selected us more than any other people. But if that is the case, then then, then what is Israel fighting for? Then what is Israel's place? Right? That point. And God skipped every other country to to only decide his mind when this country was established. Right? That's when God decided to do that. That makes no sense, y'all. That makes absolutely no. That makes absolutely no sense. Where are we getting this stuff from? It is an ideology. It is not theology. It's not, it is not, it's not even religion. It is the concept, context and, and the concept of, 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 of one people who think that they are the ones that are the chosen people. And it, everything is fueled out of that. We know that the richest continent on the face of the planet is the African continent. And that's why they rape it all around the country, all around the world. European and even this country rapes Africa because all of the minerals are there. All of the everything is there. You see? But they point to us that it's poor and blah, blah, blah and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, whatever. We need to think culture call and figure out how to exercise our voice so we can get the right people in charge. Elected in this country. Listen, this is the culture call. Y'all keep it right here. Man, I tell you, we got way more to go, but I need you to keep it locked. This is the world and we are back right here on the culture call. It's the top of the hour, 11 a.m. and some change right here on Praise 93.3 FM 790 WTSK. And I want to welcome all of our second hour listeners. That's right. You are a part of of the 11 a.m. crowd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm so glad and grateful that you are here. We've been having an amazing conversation about 
uh, agenda and uh, and what's going on with both political parties and all of that kind of you got to listen you got to be aware but i want to make sure that we are aware and i told you i was going to talk a little bit about project 2025 i'm a, i hope to get to that this morning because there's so much on my plate on my list of things to talk about but i'm i'm going to get there matter of fact i'm going to do a little bit after this right okay listen i've got a a community announcement the benjamin barnes ymca advisory council is planning a donor wall to be displayed in the new facility set to open in December, right? The donor wall will honor Mr. Benjamin Barnes and the many people who have contributed to or benefited from the historic program. We are looking for advisory council members, board members, and family and friends who are interested in being on the fundraising committee. committee. If you are interested, listen, if you're interested in for uh, being a part of the fundraising committee for the donor war at the Benjamin Barnes YMCA, the new one that's about to open in December, the meeting is tomorrow, right, at the current Benjamin Barnes. Our first meeting will be Thursday, August 15th. As, as a matter of fact, it's today, right, <laughs> this evening, right? Uh, our first meeting will be Thursday, August 15th at 6 p.m. at the Barnes YMCA. So you definitely, definitely need to be a part of that if you want to be a part. Listen, the, uh, the, the Barnes, uh, YMCA means so much to me. It is where our church was founded by my father-in-law, uh, uh, Reverend Charles Earl Moore in the New Testament Baptist Church. We were there, right there in the Barnes YMCA. And uh, yes, so we're going to do our part to make sure of that we get all of the funding that we need to have that donor wall. Yeah, and I want you to join me. Join me as we do such. Is that okay? Good deal. So glad and grateful for all of those in the community that's doing positive things and making sure uh, that we uh, are are in a, a space and in a place where you, we see things and we take the initiative. You know, the Barnes, Benjamin Barnes YMCA has long needed Renovation, long needed a new facility, bump renovations, a new facility, and now it is about to come to pass. And so we want to make sure that we support it well in our community. And so go ahead and uh, meet tonight at 11, uh, at 6, I'm sorry, at 6 p.m. tonight to talk about how you can be a part of that fundraising committee for the Benjamin Barnes YMCA donor wall. Would you do that? Thank you so very much. Listen, listen, I want to make sure, and I also want to invite you this, this tomorrow, we're going to be having a revival, uh, what we call Energize, a night of revival with Prophet Mark Vereen. He's, he's from, uh, uh, Richmond, Virginia. It's going to be a time of empowerment, a time of inspiration, a time where the Lord is going to meet us, I believe, uh, a time of prayer for our city. And not just our city, but for Birmingham and all the entire corridor of West Alabama. If you want to join us in prayer, meet us tomorrow on Friday at 7 p.m. Actually at 6.30. Meet us there at the, at the Impact Nation Fellowship Church in a better city uh, at 6.30. And we're going to be praying for our city and the entire West Alabama region. I know those of you who are prayer warriors would mind being a part of that. Absolutely. And so we started out this conversation um, talking about, you know, the 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 whole idea of each party having an agenda. And uh, I told you that one party has already released its agenda. The, the Republican GOP party headed by Donald Trump has already released their agenda and is named uh, Project 2025. I do not care how much. They try to, to distance themselves from it. It is what it is. Uh, the Harris Walls, uh, agenda for the country will not be released until, uh, after the DNC or be better yet during the DNC because if you know anything about conventions, uh, the conventions have to agree, agree, agree on ratifying a particular agenda. That's how it's supposed to be done, right? Not just drafted by an outside think tank of ideologues, but no, actually, uh, in a democracy, the people who represent each of the, either side should have a say about that. Nonetheless, uh, I've been reviewing this project 2025 and I'm going to do the same thing, uh, when Harris Waltz comes out with, with theirs as well. And I was looking at some of the things that it proposes. It's a 900 page document. 
And when the document was released, nobody said anything. But when it became overwhelmingly unpopular, uh, then the current candidate whose staff helped draft Project 2025 <laughs> started trying to distance themselves away from it. And you notice we'll not even talk about it now. And it's sad because the media is helping them not talk about it. Nonetheless, nonetheless, they're talking about crowds and followers and all that kind of stuff that doesn't even matter. Yeah, talk about your agenda, right? And as I looked over it, you know, uh, this these bullet points are just amazing. And you know, I think one of the things that really, really struck me was this whole idea of what they plan to do, deregulating big business in the oil industry and what that does, not just for the climate, but for safe spaces for us to raise our families. That means uh, that that any company could come and dump their waste in the Black Warrior River and they will have no federal regulation because they're going to deregulate all of that. That any company, you know, could come and do that or in your drinking water or whatever. They, you know, they could leave trash and toxic waste and they're, they're, it's not it's not regulated. The reason why our neighborhoods are like they are is because there is some level of regulation that, yeah, but big business owners just want to be able to dump their trash in your backyard, right? They want to end civil rights and DEI protections in government. So that means that there is no affirmative action, no diversity, equity, and inclusion, you know, and who does that adversely affect? Who is that? You, you, right. Exactly. You and I. Right. Um, they want to end all climate protections because they believe that climate change is is a, a farce, is mythical, that it doesn't exist. You know, and they're not looking at the climate as it as it were in terms of the increase of hurricanes, the increase of tornadoes. Right. But climate change can't be, you know, climate warming can't be uh, that because it's it's, you know, it's, it's 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 cold in the winter, which has absolutely nothing to do with it. It is it is pushing the planet toward extremes. It is disrupting the ecosystems of animals and plants. It is making the oranges cost more. It is making summer plants that's supposed to be sweet, unsweet, because they have long winters. The 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 map and the schedule is off in terms of from a uh, 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 from an almanac perspective, from a you know meteorological perspective, a weather perspective. That you're going to see, you know, the increase of hurricane levels and tornado levels because of it. But they say, hey, let's throw this away. <laughs> you know, let's start drilling in the Arctic again. Right. <laughs> you, you, that, I'm saying that, 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 that is something. Right. They want to condemn single mothers while promoting only traditional families. And you hear that profusely coming out of the mouth of the vice presidential candidate, J.D. Vance, that he has so egregiously insulted women, especially women who are single and or have no children, you know. That 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 misogyny that that chauvinism is running havoc in in on that side because again, if you want to move back to a time when women couldn't even vote, yeah, that's kind of what you support that part. And so yeah, they they want to eliminate the FDA, the EPA, the NOAA, uh, the NOAA, and more. They want to pull us out of. Uh, of the, the 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 countries that protect each other, they want to pull us out of that, huh? And I'm 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 sitting I'm sitting thinking, what do you, you know? And they want to continue to pack the the the, the Supreme Court and lower court with right wing conservative fundamentalist judges, you know, the same judges that ruled that uh, on on immunity that the president has immunity absolute immunity when they're functioning in their official duty. So if as a president, I think that you are a threat t t to me, that I can kill you and I won't go to jail because that's not criminal behavior. That's me operating in the realm of my own, uh, uh, my own, my own uh, office. 
that, that's protecting that's protecting the shield of the uh, uh, United States by killing my political opponents. You know what other countries do that? Russia. Yeah. Authoritarian countries do that. Yeah. That that's amazing. That they want to, they want to defund uh, the FBI and Homeland Security. They want to de- defund all of those things because they're the ones that look into certain secret behavior. They want to be able to move. See, here's the deal. Here's the difference on the side. Right now, a president could annihilate his uh, opponent if he in, in his office, and he would be found not guilty. He has qualified immunity right now. Well, Trump is not the president now. Biden is. So Biden could, by the terms of the Supreme Court, do that and have no repercussion. But you see, Biden doesn't think that that is something that is constitutional, that that is what the office of the presidency does. But one person does. This is so easy, y'all. Now, you have to back up. And say if is that is that if that's the case, then why is the is the presidential race so close? You got to start asking why is that person who do they represent? See, that person cannot exist without other people giving them reality, right? Without other people giving them space and place, right? And see that that's the problem. I know we're looking at the candidates, but there is a system, there are systems of people that literally, literally, that literally think that, that, oh yeah, let's do that. Are you serious? Taking away SNAP benefits, taking away welfare. Who, who, by the way, the most, uh, the people who most take advantage of welfare are people, are white women, are white poor women. But, 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 you know, that it, they're going, other folks going to get it. No, that people are voting for a system, voting for an infrastructure that's literally going to in, ignore them. They're going to ignore those people once they use their racism to put them in office. Right? Not only that, comma, <laughs> and here it is. We're dealing with an issue where one that's running has already been president before. So we've got a track record. Culture call. We got a track record, right? Think about the economy then. Think about where the tax cuts went then. Think about health care then. They tried every year to overturn the ACA what, what, and, and labeled it Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, so that those who couldn't afford insurance or whose company did not provide the insurance that they work for, they could afford insurance so they could have better health care. And ain't but one party trying to overturn that. Ain't but one. <laughs> and, and it used to lie about it. But you got to start asking yourself, why would an individual vote for that? What is it, it for them? That when the election is over, your community, your community is going to be ignored because you don't fall in the class, the economic class of the person who you're voting for. They're not giving you tax cuts, so they're not encouraging your health care. They're not worried about schools in the Midwest, in the deep parts of Ohio and Indiana. They're not worried about what's happening in the Appalachian Mountains and all of that. They're not worried about that. They just want to use your vote, and you got to start asking us yourself the question, why are they voting for that person? Hmm? Why? Why are they voting for that individual? When they know, well, maybe they don't know, but when they know that they are not going to do anything, I'm talking about anything that is going to assist them. You see what I'm saying? That is the, that is the thing, and we've got to start calling a thing a thing. We've got to start being honest about certain things. That yes, we we went to school with these people. We 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 we, we you know we love the same music. You know, 
And they promised at the time when we were growing up that they were going to be better than their parents and their grandparents. And now they've gotten in position and they have become their parents and their grandparents. And that's sad. Very sad. Because now we have to figure out how to navigate just like our parents did. And even at that time, everybody didn't like Martin Luther King. They revere him now. But there were some black folks that did not like Martin Luther King. Did not. There are some theologians that felt like black church was, I'm talking about black theologians, that felt like, what is it, James Washington, I believe that's his name, that felt like that black church and black theology was not legitimate unless it was co-signed or sponsored or deemed palatable by mainline fundamentalist white uh, 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 hermeneutic and, and, and theology. You see what I'm saying? See, they, I, I don't know what world they live in, but but we're gonna play around. And I don't see. And somebody gonna say, "Well, you using scare tactics?" No, I'm I'm appealing to what I believe culture call is our common sense, our common sense of character, our common sense of equity, our common sense of integrity, our common sense of humanity. That's what I'm appealing to. Yeah, that's what I'm appealing to. I'm not trying to, listen, I'm presenting the facts as outlined. That's what I told you. You can have your own ideology and your own opinions, but your truth is consistent. You can't change the facts. The facts of the matter is, this is why he's running away from it. Who else could, who else could be a convicted felon and run for president? Oh, the courts are trumped up. Okay, but the courts weren't trumped up when you were trying to send those boys in uh, in New York to the death penalty for a false accusation of rape against them. You wouldn't even change it. The exonerated five. You wouldn't even change it. The courts wouldn't. The courts wouldn't. Uh, you, uh, you know, crafty and shifty. Then the courts wouldn't false. Then. So when it's adjudicating you, now the courts are crooked. Now the courts are false. This is clear, culture call. This is clear. I have one, one of my friends talk about, well, why don't you run for office? No, nope, nope, that's not my call. Nope. Not because I can't, but I know what God has graced me to do. And he's given me grace for this assignment. So, yeah, no, that's not what I do at all. My job is to stand for my community and let them know what's going on, like Marvin Gaye said. <laughs> right? Absolutely. And this is what we got to understand, that we have a responsibility. My goodness, my goodness. They want a mass deportation of immigrants and incarceration, uh, incarcerating and them in camps. Are you serious? Are you serious? They want to create an, a, a Hispanic and immigrant holocaust. They want That's what they want to create. And put them in the concentration camps? We are in 2024. Are you serious? But ain't but one side. I keep trying to tell y'all. Ain't but one side want to do that. Now, we can continue to sing, sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. We can continue to sing, we come this far by faith and ignore what's happening. But that is not good citizenship. That is not good a uh, 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 faith context. Absolutely not. No, absolutely not. We can't continue to take our two fish and five loaves of bread and feed the folks that already got food. We've got to learn how to take our coat off, yes, as James says, and yes, make sure that they are warm as well. He says there's no way that you can say that you got faith and you see somebody who is hungry and you all you say is be filled, but you do not give them the things that are necessary for them to be filled. You don't feed them. I don't need a God bless you. I don't need a prayer when I'm hungry. I need a, I need a quarter pounder. I need a meal. Huh? I'm right. That's what I need. I don't need all this other stuff. Not at all. Don't at all you see what i'm saying see and so we're getting into the place but we've got to understand that the measure of who we are has to deal with i was that's why i was telling my, my that my mentee this morning i said son listen 
uh, my job is not to, to he called me a fanboy, and I hope he's listening to me. He called me a fanboy, Coach Call, and I said, no, absolutely not. I'm a fan of humanity. I'm a, my job is to make sure that we all as humans live our best lives, right, and, and offer them a, a way to be better in eternity, offering them Jesus to make sure that I do uh, uh, clothe the naked and feed the hungry and stand up for the poor. That's my that's my heart. That's what Jesus did. It is my job to promote the success and the the welfare of every person. I'm not saying that every person should be a millionaire and billionaire. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. But what I am saying is that teachers and people that serve ought to have living wages, that they have ought to have cost of living increases. So that while they're teaching our children, they can afford to send their children to college. You feel with me? You, you, you see what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm for. I, you know, uh, uh, unfortunately, all of my parents and my grandparents are deceased, but I want to be on the side who defend the senior citizens, even in my church, from expensive uh, medication when they need it and, and having an opportunity to go to the doctor and having that person uh, not have to leave out uh, of, of, you know, have to take care of their baby and pick out roots in the fields like we used to because we didn't have health care. I want everybody to have health care. And I want doctors to be paid fairly, to be, pay, to be paid on their skill. I don't want them to take advantage. I want there to be enough doctors. What we're dealing with right now is because of the avarice of insurance companies. There are a lot of doctors. A lot of us, when we go to the doctor's office, don't even see doctors or doctors are coming out of private practice because they can't afford the insurance. Because we are in a litigious society. So something go wrong, we want to sue. They, they got to pay for that. You know, but I also want quality doctors, quality, not somebody who's just, you know, a, a, a pill mill. No, equity, fairness. Yes, I want our children to have the best schools in our community. But that doesn't mean that I want the folks in another community for their schools to be dilapidated. No, I think educational standards should be met all across the country. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 how we pay in Alabama, we pay to uh, erect schools is about property taxes, right? And assistance from the government. Yes. So I, listen, I want to make sure that all of our schools, that the West Side should not be different than the North Side in terms of the quality of education and the quality of facili facilities that our children go to. You see what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. That is what I am saying. This Project 2025 reads as the ingredients or a list to making up a Frankenstein, a, a, a monstrous design that is going to have a destructive effect on the human community. And, and what is amazing to me is that there are people, will be people that vote for that as if, as if they don't, uh, they won't be affected by this. You don't have enough money to not be affected by these policies. I don't care how rich you are. You don't have enough money to do that. And if you got enough money, then then part of the problem might be you use, utilizing the wealth that you have to implement better uh, programs for humans, the human family. No, I'm not mad at rich folks. I'm not mad at the ultra, you know, ultra rich. No, enjoy your money. If you've made it by legitimate terms, let me say it again. If you made it legitimately, enjoy it. But you should not use your wealth to buy a politician to make you better as, as, as opposed to the rest of the families that will be affected by policies and politicians. That's what I'm saying. We have an obligation. Man, I'm reading this. It's about, it's about 75 points. Uh, that this particular article pulls out in this Project 2025. And I got, I got to come back and read a few more because it's unbelievable. As I read it, I would weep, but I'm on the radio, right? And I need you to keep it right here with your boy, L. Spencer Smith, on the Culture Call. Don't you miss a thing. Praise 93.3 brings you in. This is the world premiere. 
we are back, beloved, right here on the Culture Call with your Shuli Elspeth Smith. And I'm telling you, we've been having an amazing day. An amazing day. And I wanted to shake the table a little bit today. I wanted to wake you up, wake us up as a community. It is so important that we know what the agendas are from each political candidate. That we pay attention to our governor. Yes. That we pay attention to Governor Ivy. That's right. In the policies that they're making, they just passed a, a, a law, a, a bill that's going to provide billions of dollars to build new prisons while our educational systems are are, are not up to par nationally. You, you see, you know, and God bless our heart. But the reality is, I, the reality is simply this, is that we've got to make sure that we begin to hold our politician, our public service servants accountable from the district level to the mayor, to, yes, the governors, to the senators, to the House of Representatives on the state level, and then nationally, not just president. Because I know everything right now is focusing on presidential, the presidential election, but we got to pay attention to who we put in place even in our own state. Yes, we got to watch that. You feel what I'm saying? Because if we don't, Alabama will be down in the 40s. It ain't but 50 states. And we and, and being in the 40s is too much. It's, it's, it's way too much. It's too low. And we can do better. But hear me, but you can build a prison. See, that's, you see, that's the point. That's what I'm driving today. Even as I look at this project uh, 2025, they want to raise the retirement age. Why? Because they want to take that. What's the next bullet? Because they want to cut Social Security and 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 Medicare. You know, that is important for us to, especially you listening to me, and you st- you're older. They want to take away Social Security. They want to privatize it, not necessarily take it away, but privatization puts it in on Wall Street into all those different kinds of markets. It becomes a volatile commodity oh you know don't bet with my social security but hey you got to keep working you work until 70 are you serious at one point you want to say that one individual is too old to be the president but then at the next let me take watch watch the hypocrisy but at another thing you want to remove the retirement age or you want to raise that wait a minute (laughs) but when do you want people to work when do you want people to retire Right. And to do that, we don't have to employ a newer generation. But listen, here's the deal. You also stifle the national growth on a global stage because the, those in a particular generation are not are not uh, in depth enough to learn the new technology, the AI technology and all the other things that are coming out because. I, I don't have any young people working who are more apt to know what the technology is. They're not getting jobs. Why? Because the older people are still working longer. You, you, do you see this hodgepodge of policy? And this is why they would rather talk about race. This is why they would rather, rather talk about, you know, her or, 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 or gender. This is why they will rather talk about cultural issues, abortion and things of that nature, than to talk about what their literal policies are going to be. And, and, you know, Trump said, well, I'm going to give it back to the states. Well, he understood the states. (laughs) Yeah, when you give states autonomy to do what they want to do, that was, that, that's what was going on in, in slavery and in civil rights. Each state had their own rights. No, that that has always, no. And when the federal government stepped in with Lyndon B. Johnson, that's when the Southern Democrats or Dixiecrats switched over to the hard uh, ideological Republicans. That's how, that's the separation. That was the Southern strategy. That's where Nixon and all of them come in. That's where that happens. Right. So don't come, don't come, well, it was the Democrats that were, were, you know, the KKK. Yeah, but that was before. (laughs) Right? 
that the head of the uh, of the KKK, the Grand Master, the Grand Wizard, David Duke, was a part of the Republican Party when the switch was made. That part that there is no listen, there is no white person that has not been affected by racism and slavery from a from a generational context, especially if you're a part of the silent generation, 80s and you know if you're 70 and and 80 and on up. There's nobody that's not been exposed to racism and, you know, uh, 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 disenfranchisement of black and brown people. There's no way. So we don't have to play games. We don't have to act like it didn't happen. We don't have to act like that. that's the part of ancient history. No, we don't have we don't we don't have to do that. Absolutely not. So let's not, <laughs> you know. And so once once we get an understanding of what all of that is and what they're trying to do, the difference is clear. The difference is clear. And my thing is the difference can be clear, but if you don't punctuate, you got to put the punctuation on it. If you and I do not vote, if you, let me say this again, if you and I do not vote, I'm serious. If we don't vote, then we can complain all we want to. All we want to. Nothing changes. And it only gets worse for people that look like you and me. It only gets worse. Right? And so we have to be accountable to what we have uh, uh, to for our generation and what we pass to the next generation. We got to be accountable. We got to be accountable for that. And and if we are not, because guess what? Our grandchildren are going to have to live with this. Our children, our grandchildren, our great grandchildren are going to be trying to fix the things that we that we are are are, are having to deal with. Right. So that that part, we got to do something. And if we don't, we're going to leave something and they have a right to look back at us and say, what in the world were y'all doing? What did y'all do with y'all vote? Oh, we didn't think it made a difference because we thought both sides were the same. (laughs) Really? Really? Are you serious? That, That part. Culture call. That part. We thought both sides were the same, so we didn't do nothing. We didn't vote. We stayed home. Because the Republicans just like the Democrats. The Democrats just like the Republicans. You see? I'm a vote third party because, um, you know, I'm an individual. I don't follow the trail. I'm, you know, I, I got to, okay, all, all right, all right. You going to vote for a third party that you never hear from until a federal election? Are you serious? You going to vote for a third party who never had state office, never had county office, never had city office, never ran for anything? That's what you going to do? Ain't never been a congressman, ain't never been a senator, ain't never been a nothing, ain't never sat on nobody's cabinet, barely was a part of the PTA. <laughs> That's what you're going to do? That makes sense to you? Beloved, beloved, beloved. <laughs> I sound like y'all yonder. Beloved. <laughs> what What are we doing? <laughs> Culture call, we got to do better than that. The, ups, the excuses don't listen. The excuses really, 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 really don't mean anything. It really don't. They do not. We got to begin to think about what is best for our country, for our families, for our homes, and move away from these ideological profiles that, that oh, nobody shouldn't get an abortion. I think abortion should be illegal. No, you can say abortion is wrong. But abortion being legal means that you are you are taking the right to tell somebody else what they can do with their bodily choice. And that's not that's that that's not fair. That's not fair. Instead of engaging and having a conversation. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? That part. That 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 part. So, you know, I wanted to present some of these and I mean, we could do the elimination of unions and worker worker protections that the, the Project Twenty Five don't want you to have no union, don't want you to have no worker protections. 
And, of course, that could go either way, you know, because the threat is, well, if we get unions, then businesses are going to leave. Businesses are going to uproot. And, but you got to think about that business, though, that, that that business doesn't know how to sit down and talk to their workers be, and, because if you, you know, if you uh, negotiate a better insurance price, I'm going to leave the state? Really? That's what you're going to do? Then there's something ethical going on there. Okay. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That, that There's something ethical going there. Right? They're banning civil rights uh, 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 talks. Oh, I already said that. They're, they're, uh, they're using public taxpayer money for private religious schools. What? That means that when you pay money to the state of Alabama, that they're going to use that money to fund not your public schools, but private religious schools. So you paying taxes and giving your money to something that you will never benefit unless you enroll in that private uh, religious school because they don't like the public school system. They don't. They don't like the public school system. You know, <laughs> that that's the part. They don't like it. And, and you got to start asking yourself the question, why? Why do they not like public school? Because most of America cannot afford private schools. Cannot. You're talking about some folks that, well, the voucher program, if we adopt that, well, okay, yeah. But, yeah, what communities are going to get the vouchers? And and if that's the case, school choice, if that be the case, then why close down public schools? Why do that? Huh? That's the, that's the thing. If we all going to be this, get vouchers and go to the same place, then why don't just make pu- pu- uh, public schools better? But you can't teach ideology. You can't teach ideology and still get government funding for schools, for the education system. Culture call. That's the, that was the problem with, again, I told you, with Jerry Falwell, with, with Pat Robinson, with Paul Ryrich, that whole moral majority. Their issue was not over abortion. Beloved, no. Their issue was they were mad because the federal government would not continue to support them when they had a segregated university, which was Bob Jones University in Greenville, South Carolina. I know because I'm a South Carolinian, so I know the history. That's what it was. We want the government to pay for our uh, our entrenching and our ideological preferences as we teach generations. That's what we want. That's what that, that, that that's what they're saying. That is exactly what they are saying. And we have a voice in the matter. Culture call. Culture call. We have a voice in the matter. Now, like my grandma say, huh? You ain't got to pay me no attention. You ain't got to pay me no mind. But hear me. (laughs) We have a voice in the matter. And it's time for us to utilize it to the full. Listen, got to pay some bills, but I need you to stay right here. There's much more to come on the Culture Call. Be right back. This is the world Culture Call family, it's time for me to land this plane. I know, we were just taking off. (laughs) But guess what? Have no fear. We'll be back in the morning from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Right here on the Culture Call with yours truly, Elspeth Smith. Listen, as my grandmama and my mama would say at the end of every phone call, I love your bushel, I love your peck, and I love your hug around the neck. Listen, this has been your show, and I need you to invite other people to come and listen to the Culture Call. Absolutely. Listen, be kind, be sweet, be a um, listen. Love intentionally. I cannot stress that enough as we sign off today. Hug as many people as you can. Let them know how valuable they are. Guess what? Because life is so fleeting. You just never know when this could be somebody's last time. Absolutely. So make sure you do that. Follow peace with all men. Be the one that makes an impact in the world. And you have a beautiful and blessed day. God bless you, family.